Tonight, special prosecutor petitioned to probe finance ministry, GRA, and private firm SML over a questionable $1 billion contract for revenue assurance in the petroleum downstream, upstream, and the gold mining sectors. That's why, that's why that's three billion. Uh, I'm not, that's why I told you from the beginning. I said I don't know about this three billion. We cannot say your intervention saved three billion. That's, no, I said three billion. I'm not. I've told you that I'm not aware. We have the latest as the NDC minority in Parliament demand an immediate suspension of the contract awarded SML, which is admitted making false claims about its services to the state. Indeed, the minority has discussed this topical issue and will be moving processes in parliament to ensure that there's full-scale investigation because we do not believe that there's value for money this contract is a ripoff this is top story with evans mensa Top story is always brought to you by Vodafone. The special prosecutor has tonight been petitioned to probe the finance ministry, the Ghana Revenue Authority and private firm Strategic Mobilization Ghana Limited SML over the questionable $1 billion contract for revenue assurance in the petroleum downstream, upstream and the gold mining sector. Strategic Mobilization Ghana Limited had been awarded a separate contract worth up to 24 million CDs monthly to monitor under-reporting, diversion and dilution of fuel products and general non-compliance in the petroleum industry, something the NPA, that is the National Petroleum Authority, was already doing. The firm admitted to fourth estate investigators that they made false claims about its services to the state as it relates to alleged savings. Today, the NDC minority has demanded an immediate suspension of the new contract awarded by the finance ministry. Now, Joy News is also learning firms are in the mining sector are raising their own grave concerns about the new deal that will see the private firm pocket 0.75% of the total amount of gold that is produced and monitored in Ghana. Now, more on all that pretty shortly. But first, here is an excerpt from uh, that investigation uh, led by lead investigator Manasseh Zuriawuni. Despite the robustness of the system, the GRE has contracted a third-party company that is taking credit for all the gains made in the sector, making unsubstantiated claims of revenue savings and receiving millions of cities for a service whose impact or relevance is difficult to ascertain. SML Ghana Limited started what it calls revenue assurance services to the GRE in the downstream petroleum sector in June 2020. The managing director of the company, Christian Tetesoti, says SML is an offshoot of a timber company he will not name. Mr. Soti was Ghana's controller and accountant general from 2005 to 2009 and currently a board member of the Internal Audit Agency. He was an assistant commissioner of the GRE and as of 2019, the same time the GRE entered into the agreement with SML, he was the technical advisor, the commissioner general of the GRE. The GRE is the only customer of SML since its establishment. They didn't have any experience before they started doing this work. There were experienced companies around. There was no bid for this kind of transaction. And suddenly they have become the superior audit you know, institution for the petroleum downstream sector. That is getting all contracts. And you ask yourself, what does it take to, to actually get such contracts? This is just by inference. Everything shows that somebody was connected somebody knew about the contract set up a company no history in it no history in audits no history in forensics 
no history in um, what we call revenue assurance in telecoms. None of it. And it is given this contract. Now, if I'm to ask my colleague who did that process, that when he was shortlisting to pick the company, what pre-qualification criteria did he establish? And what would have been his reason for choosing that? My next question will go to PPA. When the application came for approval, prior approval for single sourcing, what pre-qualification did they assess? What was the evaluation? What did the evaluation report say about the company and its capability to do the job? And on what basis was that approval given? Mr. Soti left his job as the technical advisor of the GRA Commissioner General in 2019 to manage SML Ghana in 2020 when the company started its operations for the GRA. SML has its flow meters attached to the pipelines at the depots and records volumes of products that flow through the pipelines and give real-time records of activities at the depots. The fourth estate also confronted the managing director of SML with the figures the company churned out as savings it made because of its operations. First was the claim in April 2021 that SML saved the state 1 billion Ghana cities due to its operations. If you, you will use the 2019 as a base, yes, yeah? yes. so try the, this one. You will get 1 billion for 2020. It's 800 million. Okay, about, eight, about 800 million, okay. Yes. The company started operations in 2020. From the revenue figures we obtained from the GRE, the difference in the total revenue from the downstream petroleum sector between 2019 and 2020 is 800 million cities. If all the increment was attributed to the work of the company, it will still fall short of the 1 billion cities it claimed to have saved. In February 2023, SML Ghana Limited again claimed that it had saved 3 billion cities due to its operations. The company has admitted the services it listed on its website as curtailing irregularities in the sector did not exist and deleted them from the website. Even if SML was carrying out those services and all the incremental revenue within the period of its operations was credited to the company's efforts, the amount would be 2.4 billion cities and not 3 billion cities as it claimed to have saved. When we put these figures to the managing director, he made a shocking admission. That's why that's, why, that's three billion. Uh, 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 I'm not. That's why I told you from the beginning. I said I don't know about this three billion. We cannot say your intervention saved three billion. That's, no, I said three billion. I'm not. If I, I've told you that I'm not aware, because when we were told about the publication, we even called it. As we speak this morning, still on your website. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I, in fact, to be honest, me, I don't even know uh, website matter. Despite evidence that SML Ghana lied about the services it renders to the state and the amount of money it claimed to have saved, the finance minister, Ken Ofriata, this year decided that the company's contract should be expanded to cover the gold mining sector and the upstream petroleum production sector in Ghana potentially, and I use potentially advisedly, we consider it duplicitous. However, we have agreed that we want to meet with them and understand the real rationale for which they also want to do an automatic tank gauging system. It doesn't matter if their automatic tank gauging system is supposed to gauge the tanks at the depots, whilst our system gauges um, the tanks at the filling stations. At the end of our second day at SML Ghana, however, we were convinced that a company with the help of Ghana's media had made false and unsubstantiated claims and is paid millions of cities in a deal that appears to lack value for money. A few hours after our meeting, some of the claims began to disappear from the company's website. 
who were shocked at one point when government said they were bringing in an SML to actually sit at the depot where the product is lifted. And in fact, that is where there isn't much problem. Because when the product is lifted, MPA is able to see, you know, how much product has been lifted through the gauging, tank gauging systems and also the metering systems at the uh, uh, depot. So that was never the problem. The problem really was how do you track it to where uh, uh, the tax is actually collected or is supposed to be collected uh, for you to be able to uh, make the money. So from day one, the, 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 the importance of SML uh, was questioned by all the industry players. You can talk to all the players in the sector and they will tell you that where SML is positioned, they cannot be doing revenue assurance uh, for, for the state. SML Ghana, like other private sector service providers, was engaged to curtail huge losses in the downstream petroleum sector. Some oil marketing companies, OMCs, which lifted petroleum products from the nation's depots, sold the products and refused to pay hundreds of millions of cities of the tax, levies, and margins components on the petroleum products. Through these services, SMS claims that it has saved the nation billions of cities of revenue that would have been lost through under-declaration and other anomalies in the downstream petroleum sector. Our investigation has however revealed that the company's claims are false and unsubstantiated. For instance, in a report released in April 2021, the company made the following claim to back its operations. Quote, the leakages in this sector are due to diversion of petroleum products for re-export back to the domestic market and also under declaration of volumes lifted for the domestic market. The authorities have been grappling with this problem over this period because of the inadequate knowledge by the GRA officers to appreciate volume measurements. From my investigation, it emerged that the GRA officials understood the volume measurements more than the SML staff. The GRA said SML churned out erroneous figures when it included interdepot transfers to the taxable volumes and used that to calculate revenues. Petroleum products from one depot to the other cannot be used for tax purposes because it is only taxed when the product is lifted from the depot and sold to the public for consumption. Also on the website of SML, it stated its services as follows. Quote, the SML digitalization of downstream petroleum product measurement has stemmed the tide of under-reporting, diversion, and dilution of fuel products and general non-compliance in the petroleum sector. Officials of the Petroleum Division of the GRA expressed shock when we put the listed services of SML to them. Well, today, the minority in parliament, they've been wading into this controversy and uh, the minority spokesperson on the Mines and Energy Committee, and he is also the ranking member there, uh, John Junapo, is demanding an immediate, an immediate suspension of this contract that has been extended worth a hundred million dollars a year. Well, uh, contracts between the government of Ghana, led by the Ministry of Finance and SML Limited, to undertake some so-called uh, assurances, revenue assurance. And uh, first of all, let me commend the Fourth Estate, Manasse, and uh, the media houses who conducted this investigation. Indeed, the minority has discussed this topical issue and will be moving processes in Parliament to ensure that there's full-scale investigation. Because we do not believe that there's value for money. This contract is a rip-off. This contract only ends up uh, filling the pockets of greedy politicians and individuals. Because uh, just a couple of weeks ago, the Mines and Energy Committee visited MPA 
and we're made aware that they've put in place enough systems, enough mechanism, enough infrastructure to ensure that all the loopholes and all the losses are safeguarded and that they've even hooked up with the Ghana Revenue Authority to ensure that all those assurances are catered for. And so the question is that why would you need this? Even more importantly, it's turned out that the so-called three billion savings was nothing but a host. We cannot allow the taxpayer to be burdened with such unnecessary contracts that only go a long way to fill the pockets of individuals. And so we would advise that immediately that contract is suspended pending the parliamentary investigation. And when we go into it and we find out that indeed all those allegations are true, we would ensure that this contract is abrogated because it doesn't serve the interests of this republic. And I want to bring in Manasseh Ziriawone. He's a lead investigator and he's been doing this uh, with his colleagues at the 4th Estate. Manasseh joins us via Zoom. Manasseh, tonight you have uh, petitioned the special prosecutor. Tell us more. Well, Evans, we petitioned the special prosecutor this afternoon and our letter has been received. And we have the assurance that something will be done about it. The basis for our petition is the evidence we gathered that this company could not even stand up to its claims. When we asked JRA officials about what the company claimed to be doing, they were even shocked. When we spoke to MPA, they felt that there were some duplications. And players in the industry, we spoke to some operators at the depots Behind the scenes, some may not go on record for obvious reasons of victimization and the rest, but all that they said was, this company is doing nothing and taking so much. And it is true because the companies that are actually providing services, you could say that this company, for instance, Rock Africa, is undertaking the cargo tracking to stop diversion uh, you could say Nationwide Technologies Limited is undertaking fuel marking to stop dilution. You could say the ERDMS, which the MPA connects to the customs system, ensures that companies that abscond with taxes and others are locked out of the system. They are not able to load. But if you ask anybody in the industry, what problem is SML solving? they won't be able to tell you anything. The only thing they say is that they record figures for the GRA. Interestingly, the GRA which has contracted them does not use their figures for revenue assurance. And so that is what uh, shocked many when we saw that Ken Oforiata, the finance minister, now wants this same company that is admitting to uh, falsehood to go into the oil production uh, sector and has a percentage of whatever that is produced and then to the gold sector. So the basic uh, request to the OSP is to investigate this deal for corruption and also the possible breach of the procurement law because we are told, and they said that GRA is the only customer, their only customer, meaning when they were single sourced, handpicked, for this contract, they hadn't had any experience anywhere. Mr. Soti, who is the managing director of the company, said this is an offshoot of a timber company and we have no evidence and they couldn't say what other experience they had before they were handpicked for this contract. So these are the two main issues we want the special prosecutor to investigate. And, and Manasseh, you're talking about this contract extension which brings what they will get to some hundred million dollars as you estimate in your piece if you read the contracts which you cited they get a 0 0.75 percent uh 0 0.75 dollars per barrel a day i mean that's what they're going to get from this deal if indeed it is that contract is executed uh for the upstream monitoring and then for if you look at what they may get if, again, if this contract is executed for the gold uh, mining firms monitoring, they also will get their 0.5% uh, 
of of whatever is mine, whatever the total gold that is mined in Ghana. That's that's quite a lot. That's what you've you've used to estimate how much they'll be making over the period. Yes, the gold sector is actually zero point five, sorry, zero point seven five percent, which is about twenty five percent of the royalties Ghana gets from the sector. And uh, in that in the gold sector, the if you look at the last year's figures, if you use last year's figures, they should be getting about fifty million US dollars a year for doing nothing. And we have spoken to experts in the industry who say that there is absolutely no need for this company to get into that sector. So they will be uh, pocketing fifty million dollars from that sector, and then the downstream, sorry, upstream sector. We are currently producing uh, 160 to 170,000 barrels per day. And if you do the 0.75 dollars, that means if you're producing 160,000 barrels per day, this company is going to get 120,000 US dollars per day. And you ask yourself, what are they doing? And if you add that to the downstream sector, which they are already making sometimes up to 24 million cities every month you should be getting close to 110 million us dollars at the end of every year and these are the, the staggering figures that when we compare to what we are getting from uh, the e-levy for instance it's more than what we get currently for the annual e-levy collection and we check the budgetary allocations to ministries for 2024 and 19 out of the 27 ministries will receive less budgetary allocation than what this company alone will make in a year for absolutely nothing that anybody was able to point us to when we investigated uh, and let's be clear uh, this 0 0.75 dollars per barrel that they will get in the upstream sector when the monitor is going to a private company and then separate from the 0.75 percent share of every ounce of gold that is produced a total production of gold uh, that we uh, churn out uh, in this country i want to bring in john Janapo, who is a spokesperson for the minority on mindset energy also joining us is the executive secretary of ies the institute of energy security is joining us also uh, via phone mr Janapo, today you've asked for an immediate suspension of this extended contract um since this happened uh, this press conference have you received word that this is something that the finance ministry and the gra is willing to pull brakes on no 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 except that in confidence and in private some people in gra have expressed reservation about this contract indeed a couple of days ago the mines and energy committee visited the npa and from the briefing we got from the MPA, the MPA is already put in place what they call the ERDMS, on which all oil marketing companies and their orders from the BDCs are placed. Indeed, all imports and domestic production data is also placed on this platform. And no industrial transaction from a depot can go on legally outside of the ERM. ERDMS. In fact, ERDMS is also integrated with GRS ICOM system for validation and tracking on the side of GRA customs. And so clearly, the MPA has the capacity and has put in place all the necessary checks and balances to ensure that there's revenue assurance. We therefore find it very, 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 very surprising mind-boggling and unfortunate for the Ministry of Finance to proceed with this dubious contract with this company. We find this contract very, very dubious, unnecessary, a duplication of work. They add no value, and yet they are receiving huge sums of money. But even the bottom line, and you, we keep asking this question, if this country was a company and it belonged to the finance minister the shareholder, would he do what he's doing? I mean, you just waste the taxpayers' money for nothing. Duplication of work. 
And I want to indicate that GRB is benefiting nothing from this SML company. That is why we are pushing dialogue. They should immediately suspend their work. In fact, if uh, NPA told us that they are 80% complete with the entire value chain assurance system, and that sooner than later, it will be 100% effective and there will be no leakage. So why bring this company? And why can't we build the capacity of NPA to do this job? Must we necessarily bring in the private sector? Well, the chief executive, well, chief executive told Manasseh and his team that they themselves are surprised about this and that they he, he sees the workers duplicating what they're already doing, that they'll be seeking to engage SML to understand what exactly they're doing, why they want to do something they're already doing. I mean, that's a surprise that the MPA chief executive, the MPA's state agency, GRA is a state agency, and all of them appear to be in the dark on what was happening by a company that was making huge claims about re revenue assurance. This was equally confirmed when the whole committee, the committee of parliament, I mean, Manasseh has done a good job, but I think the committee of parliament, the select committee when we went to NPA, they told us that they were in the process of satisfying all the requirements in collaboration with GRA, and yet you are extending it into the mining sector. Look, let's call a spade a spade. This is nothing but an attempt to create, loot, and share. That is the simplest way to describe this contract. And it's for 10 years. Why? Well, I mean, the, the SP, the special prosecutor, has been uh, petitioned now. I, I, I guess we would judgment on that will be reserved until we see that outcome of the probe by yourself. You saying that you want Parliament to also probe into this? Yeah, that is our opinion. We did not even know that uh, Manasseh would go to that extent. And as the people's representative, uh, we thought that, look, members of Parliament should get into it. Except that sometimes MPs are compelled to take partisan positions. And that is where my worry comes from. Something that is very clear, for instance, the COVID investigation, we all knew what was happening. And yet, because we are protecting our individual political interest, people just take a partisan position. It was the same with the cash for seat. And so I'm happy that the special prosecutor is brought into the fray. I'll brief the minority leader, and I'm sure that will determine the next line of action. Uh, thank you very much, John Junapo. Also joining me, uh, as I indicated, the IES IES Executive uh, Director, who joins us now. And then I'm with you. Thanks for your time here on Top Story. Knowing what you know about the downstream and upstream sector and what is already in place in terms of revenue assurance and, and monitoring, uh, what do you make of this revelation that another agency, another private firm, claims to be doing the same job? Thanks for having me, Ivan. Uh, it is two things. Either of them uh, may be the truth. Either the government doesn't trust the very system that exists in place, of which it has control over and meant to regulate, monitor both the quality and quantity of products that move within the system. Or is a deliberate plan designed to create wealth for a few group of people. And we believe that the latter may be the truth, that this is designed to create, loot, and share. Because as we have it today, Eva, we have systems in place to check product quantity. And layers of system, I mean, the MPA National Petroleum Authority exists to carry out such a mandate. The Custom Excise and Preventive Service Service also exists to cross-check the quantity of product that comes into the system not just the, uh, not quality, but the quantity. And so this is a clear duplication of tax. Something that we are paid for to be done for the country. You go and contract somebody out to come and put what? A flow meter to check. A flow meter that can have a calibrated problem as the only means to check the product quantity. Even this is thievery and nothing else. Uh, and but, but however, Nana Moisi, isn't there a case to be made for redundancy in these in these matters? Considering where we are economically, you have to be absolutely certain that even if you have two layers, put in the third layer, 
to have redundancy in there to to, to cross check or to make sure that what you what the figures you're getting is actually what it is. It, couldn't this be the reason why this SML deal is important? If there are many backlogs, we have backlogs. That's uh, just in the system. You know, for every product that comes that comes into the system, it is marked. We are paying another private company to mark this product to ensure that this is the amount of product we are bringing in as gas oil, gasoline. Uh, ATK and whatever. And so if you're talking about layers or a backup, we have many that exist. And for God's sake, I am not sure that even the revenue authority relies on this individual or uh, this private company's figures. They will so call on MPS figures and they will still rely on such figures. I think that this case must be interrogated because it is hard to steal from Ghanaians. And nothing more. Well, I mean, as uh, on uh, on the subject of you know pronouncing judgment on this, yet yeah, it's going to be subject of uh, a special prosecutor investigation. And so, Nana, thank you very much. However, we're not in a position yet to say if it's thievery or not. The OSP, uh, now that he's been petitioned, uh, will give us an indication of what he finds when he goes into this. Uh, as you heard, the, there's also another angle being pursued by the minority parliament on that subject already. Uh, all those who produce outcomes that then gives us a certain clear picture on, on whether or not this is something you can label as uh, what you've heard now and we see uh, label it as. But uh, we can call it so uh, just yet. Uh, Manasseh and Co. just give us the facts. The OSP will have to ascertain if indeed uh, it, it has led to corruption. And that's where we are tonight. Manasseh and his team, great job with that as we uh, see what we find uh, from this as the special prosecutor gets to go into this. New night starts now.